Greetings and welcome to a preamble just before the video that you're expecting to watch when you clicked on this. Uh, this month, Andy and I have reached a grand old age of 50 episodes, 50 months recording The Watching Brief. Uh, how do you feel about that, Andy? I feel it's about time we grew up. <laughs> It's, um... if, we're, if, we're that, if, we're that, if we're that old, we need, we need, we need to grow up. We certainly, it's certainly uh, an opportunity to, 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 to make some changes. And uh, one of the things that we're wanting to do is shift from a monthly format that then we break up into smaller pieces uh, once a month to something which is a bit more fleet of foot, something which uh, is, uh, is a weekly release, a shorter release, and a release that allows us to focus on, on different aspects of what we were already covering in the watching brief. Uh, I mean, Andy, you had some thoughts on the different segments we might do. Well, the thing that I've got most interest in, obviously, is the, is the news, news aspect. And I, I think going to a, a weekly rather than a monthly format means that we can be more news driven mm. and actually probably respond to more news stories than than we would do in a normal monthly watching brief. We could we could cover more stories, probably in a shorter format, but uh, it means we, we, we can pack more in, basically. Well, <clears throat> pack more in, but also, I suppose, respond in a more timely fashion. So instead of waiting yes. three weeks to talk about something that, that, that's come up in the news, we can actually tackle exactly. it in that week. Uh, we also yeah. want to, to chop and change some of this stuff. So it won't always be a weekly release. This is news driven. Some of it may be opinion driven, uh, editorials. Some of it may well be uh, um, inviting other people in for hot takes. For example, we've long been threatening to get uh, Mr. Tristan Boyle on to talk about museums with, uh, with Andy. And I'm looking forward to seeing that um, meeting of minds, <laughs> shall we say. Um, and also, we're separating out the media picks as well. We sort of hinted at that last month, um, um, but we want to be able to give that segment, maybe have that segment be slightly longer, actually make it uh, an hour as opposed to half an hour, perhaps. But uh, so, so a situation where we can engage with our love of media and the arts and archaeology in a way that allows it to breathe and is explicitly opinion and and analysis driven. So hopefully it should mean more variety in a more timely fashion and in a way which which encourages you guys to directly get involved in the conversation. Uh, so if you wanted to cover something in a given week or in the following week, you can send us an email and we will be able to get onto that in that following week. Um, Keep an eye on us. I say it's been 50 episodes and hopefully there'll be at least 50 more months to go. <laughs> and uh, uh, enjoy the coming video. Cheers. To our second segment for the month, uh, and that is focusing on the uh, the untold stories of archaeology's women. This is actually inspired by a news article, or sorry, an op-ed piece rather, uh, from sapiens.org. And I think I'll, I'll just read the top little bit here, uh, the first couple of par paragraphs for context. Um, for Women's History Month, it has become traditional to rifle through the great names of the past, pluck out a few that strike the imagination and have the appropriate gender marker and dust them off for a new audience. We should know, uh, we should know, sorry, we run the Trailblazers Project, a largely community sourced archive of biographies uh, of women in the digging sciences, archaeology, archaeology, geology, and paleontology. We absolutely delight in the stories of great women like Jane du uh, Dulafoy, um, a sharp shooting. Uh, cross-dresser of the 80, late 1800s who once, having landed on the wrong side of a river while rafting, brandished her two rusty revolvers with their 14 bullets at a gang of eight armed assailants. Wow. And took them and told them to come back when they had six more men. Oh, <laughs> how cool is that? Um, <laughs> we love uh, the, the, the chutzpah of Margaret Murray, um, or the chutzpah, sorry, of Margaret Murray, who at the turn of the 20th century taught hieroglyphics to everyone uh, who was anyone, and even had a sideline in the popular public spectacle of unwrapping mummies. Uh, she used her extensive research in pagan ritual, into pagan ritual, to jokingly cast a hex on Germany's Kaiser. Wilhelm II that she sometimes bragged won the First World War for the Allies and and, and it goes on and and and, and uh, I also wanted just to highlight as well um, this month I was uh, sent a video um, uh, about Ellen Prendergast uh, the first well 
seemingly the first modern Irish archae female archaeologist. Um, she lived between 18, 1918 and 1999. And um, uh, the uh, QB Archaeology and Paleontology, uh, sorry, Paleoecology channel, um, send me that that uh, link. And I suggest actually to them that they should get in touch with Trailblazers because uh, they hadn't heard of them, interestingly enough. So, so uh, there's going to be links to this 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 below. Uh, I think our link of the month is a series of resources where people can learn more um, uh, connected with Women's History Month and uh, science and archaeology and, and uh, other remarkable personalities but i suppose um what i would say is uh also we need to be aware of not only of, of i suppose as sapiens.org was highlighting that the, the women which are regularly trotted out and, and discovered and discoverable indeed for these sorts mm. of narratives um and, and also some of the the, you know, the the big names um who we uh we we all know about people uh well uh you know, um, people who have shaped history. Um, Peggy Piggott, for example, uh, was recently featured in the Dig movie. Um, but actually, there's an editorial here from Nature.com. Um, Women must not be obscured in science's history, uh, and this is very important. Actually, I have a um, I have a friend who she, she's very passionate about this. She's a, a physics teacher, but also you know quite a good physicist in her own right. And she's particularly concerned about the naming of things in science. And this is something which definitely affects the anthropological world. Um, arguably, the rush to name new species of human, for example, has led to, to certain um, anthropologists becoming more prominent than others, even though uh, other people's work possibly is what they were standing on, as it were, standing on the shoulders of, of, of nameless giants. Giants, yeah. Um, yeah. But in this instance, uh, it also comes down to things like, for example, the naming of units or the discovery of certain molecules. Uh, uh, DNA, for example, had a larger team than just Watson and Crick. Um, and in this case, the, uh, the Nature.com editorial makes the point that uh, the literature uh, has failed to acknowledge many female researchers, especially from those marginalized backgrounds. Um, but thankfully, a new generation of historians are changing the narrative. Uh, and as a, as a picture at the top credited to NASA featuring uh, Mary W. Jackson and uh, highlighting yeah. her contribution to engineering um, and they have been recently named uh, recognized in the naming of NASA's headquarters building so and and, 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 in, and, in a, and in a feature film well yeah well exactly yes exactly yes um oh what was it called um oh. fixed hidden no not hidden figures something like that yeah oh yeah. I've, I've, it's, it's a good film anyway it's fun yeah um but uh, nonetheless, it's it's it is important, and it's one of those things that that I think arguably uh, it's it, because of the, for example, the th the fact that you have the Newton, you know, things like you know, uh, or units yeah. that are named after people, um, they really obscure the the body of work that goes into the into the discovery of that definable thing. Uh, and the reason why I mentioned my my friend, actually, she's our bubble friend, um, this physics teacher, mm. is that she she suggests that actually. Uh, when it comes to the ability to discover something and have it named after you, uh, that needs to go out of the window entirely. This is this is her her opinion on it. This is her take on it. But mm -hmm. that actually, the you know the uh, you know, the unit exists separate, or the the discovery exists separate from the person who happened to find find it uh, or rediscover it even on our planet that we know of. Know of if that's what I mean. These these are universal concepts, universally applicable things that shouldn't necessarily be attached to individuals, particularly named often male individuals who, who are simply the most famous I, in their field or simply the loudest in their field, actually. I, th I think the name the name thing is really important, actually. Obviously, you know, names have a sort of iconic status in, 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 in our lives. You know, our names are very important. And, and, uh, oh, the, the, the film is Hidden Figures, by the way, I just remembered. Hidden Figures. Um, oh, Hidden Figures, highly recommended. It's very yes. good. Um, and and, and eye-opening about the way women, the roles women had in NASA in the 1960s. Mm. Um, but, no, I, I was struck by one p uh, paragraph in particular in that article in Nature, uh, that you've just been quoting from, um, and it, it looks at uh, it, it cites research by uh, an, an Egyptian uh, archaeologist uh, historian um, called Hiba Abed El Gawad, uh, working at University uh, College London, um, who tells the story of a female excavator, a woman excavator in the 1880s, mm -hmm. 
who was working with Egyptologist Flinders Petrie. Uh, the article here also points out that Petrie was a eugenicist, as were many other, uh, you know, it was a scientific orthodoxy at that time. It's something we, again, we, we need to um, take on board uh, when we're talking about these issues. Um, but as the Nature article says, sadly, we'll never know who she was because the records list only her father's name, which was Mohammed Hassan. Uh. Um, and then um, Al Gawad says, uh, uh, points out that uh, to get a job on Petrie's digging team, she would have had to have given her father's name because that was the that, that, that was the only way you could access that kind of work at the time. Yeah. Um, and, and, and points out that that practice still exists in some cultures, in some countries. And that, um, but the real, really telling thing is, was that Petrie never seems to have bothered to ask the name and, and, and mention it. So it's not, not mentioned any, in any of the records. Mm. And it's interesting because, because again, it, it's a fine, it's a very fine line in some ways, because, for example, the idea of chucking out the name of a unit that people have been using for, for hundreds of years or in mm. this case for example examining people like Flinders Petrie more closely um, can be can be difficult or will require a change in in mindset or cultural or the, the, the just the 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 understanding of of what things mean the power of words and also the power of of, of association so for example in my case Flinders Petrie uh, I know very little about him, but the main, the main thing I picked up from my archaeological career so far was the quote that um, uh, curio cabinets are houses of charnel evidence, or charnel houses, no, charnel houses of destroyed evidence, I think is what, is what he said. So he, he, he making the point that, that, well, actually just things like metal detecting and selling stuff actually yeah. murders the value of archaeological evidence uh, and that is undoubtedly a beneficial observation that's something which which i carry with me and which i still essentially it's part of my archaeolo archaeological philosophy it's one of the reasons why, <clears throat> why i'm sure you and i care so much about not stopping metal detecting but rather how metal detecting is done and the mm. reason for metal detecting so on the one hand you, and, and, and i guess this is this is where the unnuanced conversation around as we've hinted at in the previous segments things like for example uh, notions of colonialism etc in the, in the curriculum mm -hmm. this is where this has to be a nuanced conversation and by no means actually is in this in this sense is it is it actually what people rush to present as being cancel culture so-called uh, in this instance it's important just to recognize flinders as an entire person as opposed to or newton for example as an entire yeah. person because newton actually objectively was a first of all a weird person <laughs> almost certainly on the spectrum he apparently his lectures were very difficult to follow uh, yeah. and when assigned the task of trying to halt uh fraudulent activity around coins i.e. clipping coins silver mm. uh, the silver content in coins um first of all i think he came up with these the striated edges so that you could see if a yeah. coin had been clipped but then <laughs> milling yeah 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 but then his um <laughs> his solution to stopping people from doing this was just to hang them <laughs> he went well, to be, to be fair, straight to capital what... punishment to be to be fair, he was drawing on a long English tradition of that. I mean, the, I mean back in the Middle Ages, you could be boiled boiled alive or uh, for for coining. No, so, no, this uh, is this is true. Yeah. But, but but in that sense, um, uh, as someone who saw a straight line between problem and solution, shall we say, um, and that wasn't necessarily necessarily objectively a good human being a rounded human being I should, maybe we should say and so it's interesting how these people often float to the surface of our our concept of the history of science and the way that science is done and how landmark discoveries are made oh well this person this usually this this man made this discovery um so so these conversations are important we've highlighted a couple of articles below uh, to go and have a look at like i say this month's link of the month is a series of resources that hopefully should be useful and uh and long may may may, the, may this continue and trailblazers continues to impress actually the um I, uh, yeah. so, so go ahead i was gonna say i've been a, a fan of trailblazers for a long trailblazers for a long time and i'm often linking to their um their their website and it's some great stuff on there some great stories some really important stories mm. and um of course we're, i mean we're going to be, be seeing a, a um 
an upsurge in interest in women scientists um, at the, in the next in, in, over, over the next few weeks, I think, because the film Ammonite about Mary Anning mm. has uh, Which just been released. Is not an archaeological movie, no matter what the internet seems to think. <laughs> Journalists, honestly. Oh. Um, and, the, and also, do you know what's also ironic? So they've been lumping together the dig and and ammonite and saying, "Oh, archaeology is the new darling of pop culture." I won't link to it below, but there was one article that I shared on on Twitter the other day, yeah. uh, and and they always start these blooming articles with the with the words either immediately Indiana Jones was or. When we think of archaeologists, we think of Indiana Jones. It's always Indiana bloody Jones. And the thing is, I love him. I love him. I've got the, you know, the Lego yeah. behind me. You know, it's all good. But just, oh, you know, pale, I'm sure paleontologists must feel the same as well. Where, you know, it's just, it's, it's a, it's a mess. It's a mess. But this is why these yeah, conversations well, that, are important. <laughs> I, 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 absolutely, although in spite of the history of, the, of paleontology, in particularly America in the 1880s, the uh, that there aren't that many movies about uh, pistol wielding whip cracking uh, paleontologists uh, chasing no. Nazis. Um, but um, no, the, the serious point about, I mean, uh, Ammonite is obviously, it's a it's a serious movie. Uh, uh, Saoirse Ronan, Kate Winslet. Um, it's had very good reviews. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing it, certainly. Um, and it ties in with the, the wonderful Mary Anning Rocks campaign that's been raising money to build a statue of Mary Anning in Lyme Regis. Um, a, 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 you know, a nice statue of a woman who did something really positive for the world. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sure Oliver Dowden will be supporting it um, and making sure it's not toppled by a bunch of raving misogynists. But um, no, in all, in, all, in, all, in all seriousness, actually, I think, I think there is another point to this, which is while it's very important, and again, I'm very conscious that we're two blokes discussing this at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know, the, the, the marginalised voices are so important, but also alongside the um, the sort of non-violent marginalization of just ignoring people's work uh, it, when it comes to be written up downgrading people's uh contributions contributions when the records are made um are the live uh issues of uh bullying and sexual harassment which our colleagues uh face and are increasingly becoming public and then our other link uh, connected with this particular discussion thread um there's yeah. a couple of articles uh, by an American archaeologist, Barbara Voss, um, who has just written two very powerful pieces about uh, looking at the hard research and what can be done about uh, harassment and uh, in, in, in archaeology. Um, she's uh, she worked with a, a, a team in the Department of Anthropology at Stanford University on on this research. And the figures that they came out with, came out with from the, from their sample, it, it's it's terrifying. Um, among currently practicing archaeologists, so this is people currently practicing, not people who left the profession or whatever, but currently practicing archaeologists. Uh, between fifteen and forty six percent of men, depending on the questions asked, fifteen and forty six percent of men, and thirty four to seventy five percent of women mm. had experienced one or more uh, event of harassment during their careers. Mm. Um, up to 8% of men and up as much, much as 26% of women had experienced unwanted sexual contact, uh, contact, including sexual assault. And then she notes, um, archaeologists of colour, queer archaeologists and archaeologists with disabilities experience harassment at even higher rates. Mm. It's appalling. Mm. And, it is, and it's that... been something that's been swept under the carpet mm. for far, far too long. Yeah, yeah, and well, in that sense, it's worthwhile acknowledging that, for example, uh, the, the 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 person on the logo for the pipeline, for example, is a problematic figure in, figure in that sense. Uh, Mortimer Wheeler himself mm. is 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 uh, absolutely problematic. And um, there's also, uh, I mean, the conversation that unfolded on the Archaeosuit Suit Facebook page around this very quickly identified that this wasn't just an archaeological problem, but also seems to be obviously in broader sciences, but also very specifically, it is an academic problem. Because often mm. one's progress in an academic career is 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 connected to how well you appear to get on with your colleagues. Or at the very least that's the implication for, for lots of young I people. think that I think there's also there's another issue involved. And again, just before we started recording this, I was mm. going through my Twitter feed this morning. And um the issue uh, I, I saw uh, evidence of then is 
uh, what we might call macho management. Mm. Uh, it's a style that really came in probably from America. Mm. Um, and it's, uh, although it, it's probably all, always been prevalent uh, among certain personality types in management. Mm. But it, um, in this case, for example, uh, an academic at Leicester University, an emeritus professor, in fact, at Leicester University, um, was um, told to basically shut up about um, cuts uh, at the university, uh, putting out opinions about, uh, about cuts about the university, or they take away the uh, take away the honorarium and uh, you know his academic uh, login. Right. Um, the, the senior management of the university, etc. Et you know that that is bullying. Well, bullying, and... but also I think there's an element there of, um, uh, and again, this we this ties in with so much of what happens in public life at the mo at this moment in time. Mm. Um, there's this element of uh, questioning, querying, criticizing, mm. admitting wrongdoing. All of these things mm. are seen as being wrong, bad, weak as it were, yeah. anti-strong, anti, as you, as you say, anti-macho, then yeah, these are things which should yeah. be avoided at all costs. And so, how, you mm. know, you could, shut up. You can't complain about this. This is amazing. We're winning. We're winning. We're projecting this winning to the world. And therefore, that's how, that's how we continue to win. And then it's, it's mm. a, uh, as I say, at the, at the very least, it's an unnuanced way of, of working. And yeah. at the very worst, it actively hurts people's uh, mental well-being and their careers as well. It's, uh, exactly. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I mean, yes. It, it, yeah. I mean, in 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 that case, uh, uh, on 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 the thread again, there was an allegation that at another university, an academic was faced with a similar situation, and basically was told, if you speak up about this, don't expect any promotions, even if you keep your job. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Nonetheless, there are some wonderful links below. Do check them out yes. and uh, and learn more um, in this very important uh, history month. 